Now, one of the things that POMS offers is the ability to enter institution-specific ALCO guidelines. And on this page of, Al of the ALCO guideline website page for POMS, here you can see that an institution is free to change and modify uh, with it stamping a date and time by the user, whatever thresholds that were set by the ALCO committee or board of directors. We also have a section where we can actually input the year-to-date net income, operating income, the fee income, and non-interest expense. And these numbers, along with the extraordinary items that might accompany, accompany it, can have a severe effect on either adversely or positively on the return on asset ratio that is calculated within the reports. Some of the things that a, a financial institution should probably look for is simplicity and ease in order to not only configure and modify the balance sheet and its reports, but also to enter certain assumptions. Here we can see that under the in a sample core deposit offering rates page, an end user can come in and change anything from the discount rate to its up and down betas, the rate floor and ceilings, and the typical offering rates for different balance breaks on their portfolio. The same is true for time deposits, time deposits as well as the loans. We also offer a very unique and simplified approach to mapping products to the GLs. For instance, this page uh, presents a way to, to simply link the product codes to the GL accounts for the various balance sheet lines. Some of those uh, components would actually be configured in a setup page for loan product codes, for instance. Here, any, uh, any institution can uniquely customize any name of product or even the, the line configuration for the balance sheet. As you can see, POMS is very simple to use. We, we have an unlimited amount of index codes that can be added or subtracted and deleted over time as it fits the requirements of the organization. The loan prepayment rates maintenance allows us to have a change prepayment rate assumptions for any interest rate scenario. In other words, for all the various shocks as well as the base case. And, and perhaps the most powerful of all of the components that, and features that POMS offers is a real-time what-if scenario. We call it a sim, an online simulation that takes about 70 seconds or less. It's free, it's unlimited, and can be basically delivered within a minute in terms of reports after it's run. And it includes extensive reporting and an analysis. So before we sum up this presentation, I just wanted to leave with you a, a few reasons why uh, several of you may be interested in POMS or find it uh, indispensable for your institution. The first, of course, is its robust analytics, accurate reporting, it's cost effective, and it's internet based. It's 100% secure, and it's quick and simple to use, and in my opinion, the helpful customer support that we provide at SSNC seems to be the greatest of all value propositions I've seen in the marketplace. The summary includes that the steps of the complexity of the ALM product should fit the needs of an institution such as yourself. The board and senior management commitment and involvement is critical to success since buy-in is, is always the first avenue to achieve that. Financial institutions are and continue to be impacted by economic, demographic, and regulatory, as well as technological changes. The balance sheets are getting larger and more complex with more outsourcing. However, we find in general that the vast majority of financial institutions continue to step up and are doing well, generally speaking. In closing, I'd like to offer just a few thoughts. If you can't identify your risks, you can't measure them. And if you can't measure them, you can't understand those risks. 
And if you can't understand them, you can't manage or control them. And at this point in the presentation, I would like to uh, defer to Wills uh, to see if we've received any questions online through the webinar. We did. We've received a couple. The first one is, what are the types of inputs and configurations that I can test with the online simulation? That's a good question. Uh, I did cover that online simulation, and we would be happy to provide an online demonstration of that in real time. But to give you some points, uh, you can basically run a pre-purchase decision to examine any net effects of the balance sheet changes prior to the investment decision. Some of these might include a new interest rate, new products uh, to purchase or, or sell securities that may be actual or hypothetical in your portfolio, and also to adjust any volume changes. And in addition, you can analyze sensitivities at a granular level uh, by doing sensitivity uh, testing. Uh, you can do this using different floors, ceilings, and other embedded options. Hopefully that will be enough to cover that question. Great. Another question is, what are some of the pros and cons using GAP-only reports? Well, the GAP report evolved over time, but its origin comes back, goes back to almost the early 1970s. It's uh, conceptually simple. It's easy to explain. You can even use Excel spreadsheet uh, because it doesn't require sophisticated or expensive software models. But there, as with everything with Excel, you know, there's always a possibility that there might be human error. Uh, it provides an indication in direction and a degree of interest rate risk. But the cons usually outweigh the benefits in the sense that it doesn't always quantify the full aspect of risk. It assumes asset and liability characteristics are always symmetrical. Uh, for instance, static cash flows a parallel relationship among all indexes, uh, open-ended repricing, and common rate calculation basis. And sometimes it may even provide a misleading result. So it's, it's a very important res, uh, report to use and reflect upon, but it really should just be one slice of interpretation. And the other reports, such as the projected income at risk and projected income uh, value at risk or NEV reports seem to be more powerful these days. Okay. Do we have time? For, do we have time for others? Um, probably for one more question. Um, why is an online ALM solution like your Palms solution the best solution? Well, POMS employs an ASP platform. ASP stands for Application Service Provider. It's centralized and can be accessed remotely. And what that basically means is that there's no hardware or software to purchase or to maintain. Plus, all the data is safe. It's stored on several SSNC backup servers that reside across North America. Let me think of some other reasons. There, there's Definitely um, no additional technical or administrative staff required on the end user side. In addition, all the upgrades and enhancements are provided automatically in the background. Uh, we do release release notes, uh, which would basically, for POMS, uh, communicate any new enhancements, of course. But for the most part, we find that the ASP is the preferred method these days, since almost every organization is uh, can access uh, through the, remotely through the Internet. We have a very safe online website. It's fully secured, and it's uh, hosted online where managers can access and share their portfolio analyses when traveling or even working remotely in presentation formats such as this. And I think that's probably all the uh, time we have for questions right now. There are still a couple of questions, so we can just reach out to um, people individually and provide the answers. Okay, I, I would be happy to follow up with that. Uh, I, at this point, Will, I, I'd like to just provide some contact information to all of those who have tended, attended today's webinar for ALM. Again, my name is Tony, and I'm the product manager. We also have one other person on board here. If you have any questions about SSNC's uh, portfolio of products, especially POMS, please contact Chris Warner. 
she would be happy to organize an online demonstration so that it's as relevant as possible to your requirements and plus we can answer any questions or provide any samples such as reports to your organization. And with that, I just want to thank everybody for attending today's meeting. We look forward to hearing from you in the future.